Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day 8 puzzle using Ivy. This problem has a fair amount of string manipulation, so Ivy isn't the most obvious candidate, but it does well enough with the strings, and then it excels at the rest. So in the puzzle, we have a sequence of lines, each of which has 14 fields specifying the scrambled wires observed lighting a seven-segment display. The first 10 fields are the 10 different observed wire combinations in this scrambling, corresponding to the 10 seven-segment digits in some unknown order. After those come the four wire settings for an observed reading, and we need to figure out how to read these even though the wires are all scrambled. Now the first puzzle observes that a few digits can be identified by just counting how many segments are lit up. The digit one, for example, is the only digit with just two segments. So we're supposed to count how many of those uniquely sized digits are in the input. To start, we need a representation of a digit, ideally one that doesn't depend on the order of the input string, so that ABC and CAB are the same value. An idiomatic IV data representation would be a seven element vector with ones for each segment that's lit. That's easily computed with an outer product. This is a different spelling of the outer product operator. In my copy of Ivy, as an experiment, I've added a new rule where the at signs the left of an operator means to run the operation for each element of the left argument and then assemble the results into a vector or matrix. And the at sign on the right means to do the same for the right argument, so the two at signs produce the usual outer product in this case. Having computed that overall presence matrix, we can add up the rows to get the overall summary. In this case, there's a B, a C, E, and a G. So let's save that. Okay, that looks like it's working. So now we wanna build one of these vectors for every string in the input, every space separated string. We can do that by reducing over the input string, which proceeds right to left. So we'll define an operator, x words of y, where x is the next input character, again, from right to left, and y is the result so far, except for the very first call, where y ends up being the very last input character. So if we're in that first call where y is a scalar, then we'll make a one by seven matrix with the result of string of x of y. Otherwise, if x is not in the wire set and there's something on the top already, then we'll just make a zeros and push that on the top. And otherwise, We'll take the value of x and add it to the top of the stack and then replace it. And so now we should be able to say words of a, b, c, d, e, f. That works. And we'll just define a simple bi a unary operator that reduces using words. All right. So now we can parse the input, but we weren't paying attention to the line breaks. So we can just break up the groups of 14 afterward. should do it. And sample equals format words of sample. Undefined variable x. Oh, here. There we go. Um, two take sample. That looks right. So let's parse the input while we're here. That's going to take a second. Here we go. And just for fun, we'll do the tiny one too. There's our tiny input. All right, so great. Now we have some real IV data, and we don't need to look at the strings anymore. So in each group of 14, the first 10 are the digit corpus, and the last four are the readings, which is what we're supposed to be looking at. So let's extract those. Drop the, the 10 corpus values. So to take readings of sample. That looks right. Now we need to count the number of readings that match a digit with a unique number of segments. So first, we'll just count the number of segments in each reading. And the unique segment counts are two for digit one, and three for digit seven, four for digit uh, four, and seven for digit eight. So we'll count those, and that's five. So let's save that. I'll say, what are the easy readings in the sample? There are 26. That is the right answer. So let's look for easy readings in the input. Four, five, six. All right, on to part two. Now in part two, we're being asked to decode the entire number. Um, and so let's start with this simple example that we had before, the tiny example. And I've already transcribed the wiring diagram from above. These are the 
wires that are available in each uh, segment. So 0 has A, B, C, E, F, G, 1 has C and F, and so on. So let's make the digits for that. Digits. And so the first 10 rows of this tiny example are the first 10 are these rows from digits with the rows and columns transposed in some way. And the previous part hinted at counting segments to try to figure out which is which, but that doesn't take us quite far enough. Of course, we could try all the permutations of the wires and numbers and see which one comes out right, but I want to see if I can avoid guessing. And so let's look at how many times each wire appears in all the digits combined. Um, that's pretty good. Clearly the wire that appears six times is B, and the wire that appears four times is uh, E, and the wire that appears nine times is F, but the other counts are ambiguous. There are two wires that appear eight times and two wires that appear seven times. But that count ends up being an order independent signature for each wire, it's just not unique. So if we can find a unique one, then we'll know which wire is which. So what if instead of counting the number of times each wire appears, what if we count the total number of segments it appears with, including itself? We can do that by multiplying, before we do the addition, with the sum of the digits. And so we still have a duplicate here, 38 is there twice, so maybe we shouldn't count itself. Let's try that. Whoops, that's not right. There we go. Um, that still doesn't work because 35 is duplicated. So now let's try adding. That works out. All the different counts are unique, so that will be a working signature. All right. So now we can take the 10 corpus values from tiny. And we can look at the signature of the digits and the signature of the corpus. And it works out. That is clearly a permutation of the other. So now we can use the binary iota operator to look up um, where the digits appear in the original. So the binary iota operator gives us back the right vector with each value replaced by the index where the same value appears on the left side. And that's the permutation order we need. And so now we can say minus 4 take tiny. Those are the readings. And we can rewire it using the new order. That's the rewired digits. And so let's see if this wiring works. I have a vector already prepared that shows the full wiring for four digits with wires lowercase a to n and then uppercase a to n. And we can turn the rewired values into spaces and fill boxes by indexing into a string. Those are the wire values, the same ones we just saw, um, but with boxes instead of zeros and ones. And then we can replace uh, this original display here, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, L, M, N. Oops. It's not going to work if I don't do that right. So we'll look up where the A's and B's and C's and so on are in the display, and then we'll replace those with the indexes from that string. And sure enough, the value is 5353, 53, which is what it's supposed to be. Now, it's great that we can see it, but we need Ivy to see it. Remember, we have the digits, 0 to 9, and we have the rewired digits. And we need to figure out where the digits appear. So IOTA will do that for us, too. We can say look up rewired in digits. And they're at positions 6, 4, 6, and 4 because it's 1 indexed. So we can make it 0 indexed. And then we can interpret it as decimal. And so now we can put that all together. To read a single row, we'll unscramble, which is we take the first 10 and look up the digits, and then we'll rewire. We'll take the actual readings and unscramble those, and then we'll do what we just did, which is digits iota rewired. So now we should be able to say read tiny, and we get 5353. So now we can read the samples, and those are the values that were shown here, and if we sum them up, That works out. All right, so now let's do the input. It's a big number. And we got our stars. Have a nice day.